you may be really surprised about how astute the board is about how they're functioning and where they need to improve. And then when they get all done, if there's an area that you think is glaring and they really need to focus on, then absolutely as an ED, speak up. Does that make sense? But you're not at, you're not at the beginning. You come in near the end. And there's a difference in timing. Yes, ma'am. Well, so do you have no staff at all? We have two staff, no executive. Okay. Well, I think what will happen is you will stay small. Okay, so that's, that's the thing. You know, I'm a big believer if it's working, then you can stay with it. But I think eventually, um, in terms of if, if your board members are not burning out, and they clearly are doing all the work, then they, must, they are taking on certain roles that the executive director plays. Is that correct? Okay, if it works for you. Um, but I, as I said, if you look at growth, then I think you begin to look at what, what more do we need? Because there's a leadership there and a, and a good ED can really be helpful. Okay. Okay. Um, great. So we talked about, so we talked about the self-evaluation. All right, next to last one. But are there any questions about board and self-evaluations? Um, what would be the barriers to doing this? Talk to me about what, is, what would be the resistance to do a board and a member? Yeah. Well, I, I've actually kind of run into this pretty recently. Yeah. They're afraid of the results. That's <laughs> Ultimately, right. Ultimately, they're just, they don't, they don't want to see. They, they, yeah. they feel safe not knowing what they don't know. She said they feel safe not knowing what they don't know. Mm. That's one of the reasons by having the board set their own goals. If that's easier for them to see. And so you can set their own goals and then see how they accomplish them. When you get into the processes about do we openly communicate, do we share information, that gets scarier for them. I also think there's a confidentiality issue. And, you know, in doing uh, evaluations in the past, I've actually brought in an outside consultant. The evaluations don't come to me, they go to that person. They compile them separately so that the mm -hmm. data is submitted aggregately so that each board member feels like they can speak honestly. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Okay, yes. Louder. Oh, I can follow up on that comment because I am a consultant that meets confidentially with board members. Yeah. And it's amazing as a group if you'd ask them, how are you doing? Oh, we're fine, we're great. Right. You get them one on one, you hear the same story over and yeah. over and over and over again. That's right. And then you're able to present it back to the group without it looking like mm -hmm. so and so said some, you know, that yep. kind of stuff. Yep. And I think that's one way to do it, huh? Um, you might start small one year and just pass around three by five cards, you know what I'm saying, to everybody and say, would you write down on one side in what areas are we doing well? And on, on the other side of the three by five cards, in what areas do we need to improve? And have them write it down, have them turn it back into you, pass it into you, and say, we'll compile them and bring them to your next board meeting. So if they want to, if they want to camouflage their writing, they can. <laughs> So, but, what you're, but, but the point that's being made is a very, very key one, is that there's going to be a reluctance for many board members to speak openly about issues. I agree. Yes? Well, I'm just learning about 360-degree reviews, and I uh -huh. think that makes sense here. And that, uh, because I think when I see how people are perceiving me, I would probably tend to change a lot. Quicker, Absolutely. More I think a 360-degree review is essential for an executive director if the exec when, as the board reviews the executive director. A 360-degree review means the board and the staff, and even the community, okay? Now, a 360-degree review on the board, I don't think I'd go there yet. <laughs> uh, okay, and it, would, would you guys, you know, uh, you know I, I wouldn't start there. Is that what you're asking? Start with just them first, okay? And as I said, at the end, then I think an ED helps, helps on that, okay? Because to me, 360 includes staff. And you don't want the board, you will not want the board getting involved in the staff in that capacity, because then the lines of authority really get blurred. Okay. All righty. Finally. Great. Yes. Back. One of the things that we are trying to implement is create an as-is report by the executive director of how many board meetings were held, what kind of, a, because you have the minutes going through the board meetings, who was actively involved, who was not. So you just give a report to the board as is. 
So that creates an evaluation for tool for them to analyze within themselves. Good. So that you're Good. not going in uh, in co contradiction to the board or you're going against the board. They don't have a feeling that you're against them. Excellent. Good idea. Okay. Last last key enabler. Board strikes a right balance of work and fun activities, including effective efforts to connect board members to the mission of the organization. That one usually rates pretty highly. People generally agree, right? You're doing the right things. How many of you do this pretty well? Let me see your hands. Good. How many of you need to do a little more of this? Good. Then do it. You know, a lot of people, some people, yeah, do it. You know what to do. You know, some people come to board meetings because they just like to be with people. So, you know, I know a lot of boards that have Little, little snacks before the board meeting and snacks after the board meeting so people can stand and talk to each other just so they can connect. You know, um, one organization, whenever they have a new, whenever they recruit do new board meetings, they have a cocktail party at somebody board member's house and everybody gets in a big certain loop and they all go around and talk about why the mission of that organization is important to them, why it spoke to them. And it almost brings tears to your eyes. Second Chance uh, used to be one of our investees. Second Chance, every board member in Second Chance is responsible to kick off and be a sponsor of a training program. They don't have to pay for it. They're like the advocate for the Second Chance trains people that have come out of prison. Okay. And they're responsible for it. And that gets them into the thing. Okay. Let me, let me conclude. So get people out of the boardroom, too. If you can get them out of the boardroom, Sometimes don't meet at the same place every month. You know, maybe once a year go someplace else. Something that's possibly relevant to your mission. Okay, let me conclude. So, building an effective board is a process, and things don't change overnight. Okay, but you can have relatively significant impact if you can just make one, two, or three small changes. I think you'd be really surprised. And as you look at these key enablers. Look about which are the ones that I might want to focus on. Don't take them all on. You'll exhaust yourself in a month. Okay? And you might want to give this survey to your board and let your board help identify what are the key ones and where do they want to start. Okay? I'm available for consultation afterwards. We have a board development resource team that's available to consult with organizations on board development. Thank you.